Hello, I'm Thomas. Thomas Gainsborough? And if you want to know what England and English life was like 250 years ago, have a look at the marvellous pictures of the time. My marvellous pictures, of course. I was born in the middle of the English countryside in Suffolk. As a small boy, I like nothing better than playing outside. I love animals, and I also love collecting things. Pebbles, leaves, nuts, flowers, even beetles. I gather them into my basket, and I make drawings of them at home. There are six of us children in our family, and I am the youngest. Red's a good colour for a flower. And I often spend time painting with my mother. Look, here she is. She is known around here for her fantastic flower paintings. Maybe that's where I got it from. Brought up with a brush in my hand. And here's my father. Some of the time he helps at the village school, but he buys and sells material for people's clothes. This is a delivery of lovely dress material that has just arrived at our house. Now, remember that. Colours, material, countryside and people. That's what I'm about. Or rather, my pictures are. Pay attention. For At school, sake. I found the lessons so boring. I would draw rude pictures of the master to make the other boys laugh. And <laughs> when the weather was good, I would sometimes miss school and go wandering into the countryside with my sketchbook. And one day, my drawing came in really handy. In fact, one day, my drawing helped catch a thief. I was sitting with my dog in the grass by our neighbour's orchard. It was warm and sunny, and the trees were full of juicy, sweet pears, and I was sketching idly. Suddenly, I saw a man jump down from a tree and run out of the orchard with a bag full of fruit over his shoulder. Oh, I shouted, Stop, thief! and quickly grabbed a brush. In seconds, I drew his face, and later the police were able to use my picture to find and arrest the pear thief. I felt very clever. I am very clever. And I realised that painting could have a purpose, as well as being fun. My father could see my drawings were good, so when I was 14, he sent me to London to learn from a French artist, Monsieur Gravelot. There were two things about this that I liked. First, of course, I learned how to make and use paints properly. And secondly, I met and got to know quite well some of the big superstar painters who used to gather in the studio to drink and chat. One day, I was asked to paint the portrait of a pretty girl about my age called Margaret. Now, when I paint someone's picture, I think it's important to get on with them very well. And Margaret was so pretty and nice that I found her very easy to get on with. To cut a long story short, I asked her to marry me. She had a very rich father too. And at our wedding, he generously gave us money to start our life together. I didn't have much money at all, so this was very important for me. Margaret and I had two girls, Mary and Margaret. And here I painted them chasing a butterfly. Can you see how lovely their dresses are? How well I've done the texture. Oh, you can almost feel that silk. One thing I'm known for is the way I can paint lovely clothes. Do you remember I told you my father worked in the clothes business? Maybe that had something to do with it. Oh, imagine if you are good at something and no one knows it. How annoying. My painting needed to get noticed. I wanted success. I deserved it. If my pictures were any good, people were going to have to pay for them. In my day, there were no art galleries, so how could I get my work seen? I knew a man who ran a hospital for unwanted children. It was a big place with bare walls, and he had struck upon the brilliant idea of decorating the walls with paintings for people to admire. I made a picture specially for him and gave it to the hospital for free. Aren't I generous? 
Well, pretty soon people started to talk about me and my work. And when I returned to my hometown, I found people were queuing up to get their portraits painted. That's how painters earned their money. You paid to be painted. Now, you might think you need bright light to paint, but strangely enough, I prefer working in the twilight. I paint very quickly, working very fast, getting the paint onto the canvas. I sometimes use an extra long brush, like a broom, so that I can stand back from the picture while I paint. And do you have favourite things you like to draw? I do. Trees, flowers, clouds, woods and rivers. Paintings we like to call landscapes. The sad thing is, no one wants to buy these pictures. Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. Aren't they smart? Lovely clothes, posh gun, nice dog. And all that land is theirs. They had just got married and they wanted a picture to celebrate their wedding. It is a lovely summer's day and they are looking out at us from a bench in their huge garden in Suffolk. You see, I've managed to mix landscape and people together, which means I paint my favourite subject, the countryside, and the people in the picture, who adore me, pay for it. No wonder I'm hitting the big time. Clever old me. I soon realised that Suffolk didn't have enough rich people. I needed to move to a big, busy town full of fashionable, important people. We went to live in a town called Bath. It was teeming with well-to-do lords and ladies, musicians, actresses and celebrities who spent the day enjoying themselves. They sat and drank tea. They listened to concerts. They danced at big parties. They went for walks in the park. They sat and chatted in warm water pools. And of course, everyone wanted to sit for a portrait painter. Remember, there were no cameras then, so it was like having a very posh photograph taken of yourself. One of the biggest superstars in Bath in my day was this lady, the actress Mrs. Siddons. But there's something very odd about her body. It's a secret, really. It's made of wood. You see, Mrs. Siddons was far too grand and busy to sit still while I painted her. So, after I had done her face, I used a little friend of mine. Quite a big friend, actually. <sighs> it's a wooden doll, as big as a person. This is called a lay figure, and the lay figure wore the clothes and sat for you in the chair without complaining while you painted the body. If it wasn't for the fact that I was a great painter, and I do mean a great painter, I'd have made a fabulous musician. Oh, I would. My other great hobby, when I wanted to let my hair down, and I do have lovely hair, mm, was music. I taught myself to play several instruments. My closest friends were not the snooty lords and ladies I painted, but rather the musicians, actors and writers with whom I could have fun. During my time in Bath, I visited Wilton House, the lovely home of the Earl of Pembroke. The Earl had a fabulous collection of paintings by Anthony Van Dyke. They were the most wonderful I had ever seen. Hard to imagine, I know, but Anthony Van Dyke, Tony to his friends, was even better than me. Just about. The shining satins and silks, the handsome men and, and beautiful women. And I was inspired to try and steal, I mean, capture something of his magic. And this is what I painted. It's my best-known picture. My masterpiece, if you will. The Blue Boy. Actually, the boy isn't really from a grand family. He's the son of a friend of mine, and I was just using him as a model to practice a much grander style that all my fashionable new customers were dying to get their hands on. Don't his clothes look real? You could almost 
touch them. Well, don't, unless your hands are very clean indeed. Oh dear, the man in the blue coat is in big trouble. Do you know what he's done? Or rather, not done. He has not hung my pictures properly and I won't stand for it. We are standing in the Royal Academy, a new art gallery in London. I always send my paintings to be shown with the strictest instructions about how high they should hang. Well, the blue boy, can you see it on the left? No, you jolly well can't. Well, hardly. It's too low, and all the ladies' big dresses are getting in the way. And the picture of the king's three daughters. Well, it's far too high. You can hardly see it up there. Imagine if you did a lovely picture for your mum and she put it up where no one could see it properly. Wouldn't you be a little bit put out? Although I was known for my gorgeous portraits, and they really were gorgeous, I didn't only do pictures of rich and important people. Here are two unimportant shepherd boys standing over fighting dogs. Look at the boys' faces. Which do you think is the nasty one? I've caught that expression well, haven't I? Years of practice. I died at the age of 61. A well-known, a successful and a brilliant artist. I was buried amongst the leafy trees and flowers at Kew, on the outskirts of London. More than 200 years later, my name lives on today in all the wonderful pictures of English places and English people that I left behind. Go on, go and see them for yourself. Tell them Thomas Gainsborough sent you.